Hello, Mr. Bigger here. Today I want to talk about lines of latitude and longitude and how this relates to plotting lines on the Orton survey maps and how sailors can plot positions on marine charts using latitude and longitude and how we measure distances on a chart. First of all, I want to have a look at um, Orton survey maps. Um, BBC Bite Size give a really good explanation of this on mapping the world. So let's have a quick look at that. I'm just working out where I am by using this world, a globe, to give it its proper name. A globe is a model of planet Earth showing how it looks from space. This one shows all the countries of the world, almost 200 including the UK. It shows all seven continents, Europe, Africa, North America, South America, Asia, Oceania and Antarctica. Although I love my globe, it's a bit awkward to carry around. Instead, it's much easier to use a map or a book of maps called an atlas. An atlas has pictures of the same places as the globe, but they are spread out over the pages, which allows you to see the world in more detail. So the globe is cylindrical, like a ball. And the atlas, or in maritime, in nautical, we call it a chart, is flat. So the chart is going to be slightly different from the globe. So she goes on to explain this. This does have its drawbacks, as the earth is round, but pages are flat. So what we see on a map is slightly distorted. So they slightly distort the chart to fit it on a flat piece of paper. If we're looking at a chart that's less than about 600 miles, um, the differences are negligible and we can use it for navigation. Globes and maps are how we've seen the world for hundreds of years. They used to be hand-drawn to scale from careful measurements of the distances and angles between landmarks. But these days, you can use apps on your computer or tablet. They're even more detailed because they use... The app that we used last week is a Navionics web app. You probably remember that. If you haven't, go back to last week's, log on and uh, have a look at the free Navionics web app. It's amazing. Photos taken by satellites and drones. The photos are put together like a huge jigsaw puzzle, which means we can view whole continents or even people's back gardens. <sighs> However you look at the world, whether it's with a globe, atlas or a computer, it will always be fascinating and beautiful. Oh, I'm all so that's quite a simplistic view of the globe and charts, but I thought she put it there um, together quite beautifully. OK, let's go back. So having looked at that, the questions we need to answer. What is used to make highly detailed maps? That was towards the end of the video. And why is it what we see on a map? slightly different and slightly distorted so if you don't know the answer to these i suggest you just go back on this video and the answers are there dig them out and fill in these two boxes and carry on so i want to talk a bit about Alton survey maps um you should have covered this in geography if not i'll give a recap um if we click on this link here it's how to take a grid reference. So all the survey maps are on grid references. The information is on the second two pages. So all the survey is slightly different. The UK has got all these um, boxes. It's all divided up into these boxes and they're given letter references. And each of these boxes is further divided up um, into a grid system called Eastings and North Northings, and we go along the bottom first, so along the hall, up the stairs. So along the bottom, up the stairs. Okay, if you do it in greater detail, you'll find that they'll give a six grid reference here. So if we look on this one, it gives the box number TL. So all the answers are TL in this box. And it says here, here's an extract of the one to 50,000, which is the scale of the map. Use a national grid reference to find the symbol. So the church at TL683365. So zoom it in a bit. TL683, 68, that's halfway. 683 is going to be there. And 365. 
so it's going to be halfway up the next one so there we go there's the church at tl683365 so in your question i've asked you to find gainsfield hall windmill so if we flick back So Gainesville Hall windmill is this little similar windmill here. So along the bottom, up, and you should be able to get a number. And I want you to pop that in this box here. I've already given you the TL reference. On the second one, I've given you the reference. I want you to tell me what it is. So it's TL678343. So I'll get you started on it. So TL, we're in the right chart. Along the bottom, 678, 678, and the next one will be 343, 343, it will be 34, and about that far there. Okay, and I want you to find out what that is. So that's Alton Survey, you should have covered this in Geography. Um, I wanted to show you that just to recap on your Alton Survey. So I want to talk now about latitude and longitude. Let's have a quick look at the, uh, the BBC bite size. I've been asked to deliver this parcel to my cousin, but he lives on an island and doesn't have an address to send things to like you or me. It's not a problem though, because I know a good way to find out exactly where he lives. First, I'm going to find out which half of the earth he's on. Running around the middle of the planet is an imaginary line called the equator. Well, I'm on the half that's above the equator, which is called the Northern Hemisphere. And he lives on the half that's below the equator, which is the Southern Hemisphere. But I also need to find out how far around the Earth he is and how far down. To do that, I'll use what's called latitude and longitude. Lines of latitude run around the Earth like imaginary hoops and have numbers to show how many degrees north or south they are from the equator. Lines of longitude run from the top of the Earth to the bottom and divide up the Earth a bit like segments of an orange. The line going through London, called the Greenwich Meridian, is the starting point at zero degrees. The other lines show how many degrees east or west of this you are. If I want to say where a place is in the world, I just need to look at where the lines cross and read the numbers. Ah, there he is! Latitude is 32 degrees south and longitude is 115 degrees east. Hmm. Hmm? What is the imaginary line around the middle of the Earth? So we've got the globe around the middle of the Earth. What is the imaginary line? You should have known that from geography. If not, go back to the video. What is the name of the longitude line going through London? And that actually goes through Greenwich at the Royal Observatory. So what is the name of that? That was in the video. What are the imaginary lines that go around the Earth horizontally? And that was in the video as well. Which line does the Greenwich Meridian run along? So which line... Or what is the line named that the Greenwich Meridian runs along? So your grid system goes from the equator in the middle, zero, up to north, 90 degrees, down to the south, 90 degrees. So it measures north, south, from the equator, zero to 90, which is your latitude. So the UK here is between 50 and 60, degrees north of the equator. Longitude is measured from the Greenwich Meridian or the Prime Meridian and it runs through Greenwich and it's measured east and west 180 degrees. So here we can see that the, uh, the Greenwich Meridian actually runs through the Royal Observatory in Greenwich in London. And it meets at the back of the planet at the uh, 180 degrees on the date line. So the position is given by latitude and longitude. Latitude is measured 0 to 90 degrees north or south of the equator, which we've said. And the longitude is measured 0 to 180 degrees east or west of Greenwich. So now we have a grid system. We can work out our position anywhere in the world 
north or south of the equator and east and west of Greenwich. So if we look at the position here of New Orleans, which is 30 degrees north and 90 degrees west, we can go 30 degrees north of the equator on the line there, and then we'll go 90 degrees west from the Greenwich Meridian, and where these two meet will be the position of New Orleans. Is our position in London north or south of the equator? Pop the answer in this box here. Is our position in London at the London Nautical School east or west of the Greenwich Meridian? Put your answer in here, It'll either be east or west. What is the latitude and longitude of London? That's given in the video. What is the latitude and longitude of New Orleans? That's also given in the video. The last piece of work is a picture of the globe with your latitude scale, north 20, 40, 60, 80, south 20, 40, 60, 80, 80. Your longitude scale, zero, west 20, west 40, west 60, west 80, west 100, west 120, west 140, west 160, west 180, east 20, east 40, east 60, East 80, East 100, East 120, East 140, East 160, East 180. So you've got your North, South, East and West. And what I'd like you to do is just pop in the latitude and longitude of these letters. I've done the first one for you. So A is on this line, which is 20 degrees South, 20 degrees South. And if we go up to the top, it's 100 degrees east. And I've also done I for you. So I is in the middle of this one between 40 and 60. It's 50 degrees north. And follow it up, 120 degrees east. So if you can complete the rest of these, put your latitude first, then your longitude, that's the end of this exercise. Well, if you enjoyed this, you want to know how to uh, plot on the chart, on um, extra information to... Uh, increase your knowledge on nautical navigation please pop click here and there's more on charts and how to plot your position well i hope you enjoyed this and uh, we'll see you soon thanks very much cheers bye